hallelujah none of you will die i'm saying it again none of you under the sound of my voice will die And anyone in partnership with demon spirits anyone in partnership to bring you down to the grave and discourage many people in the name of Jesus Christ this night the cross of the Lord falls upon their heads are you now ready to pray I'd like you to begin to declare that this year is my year of marvelous light name every aspect of your life ministry marriage children business go ahead and declare by the power of the holy spirit it is my year of marvelous light in the name of jesus supernatural insight into the mysteries of the kingdom understanding of the ways of god the administration of the life and the power of god within my heart and within my body direction 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 even by the spirit go ahead and pray this is the year for supernatural empowerment i am not weak strengthened by the power of the holy ghost decree and declare it is not a negative year for me i prophesy by the power of god light shine light shine light shine command the light to shine in every area of your life light shine over my spiritual life this is a year for high level spiritual ascendance pray over your health and your body in the name of jesus my body is preserved preserved by the power of the holy ghost kept by the power of god kept by the power of god no demon no devil no cause no enchantment will prevail over my body in the name of jesus pray pray for your family cover them with this prophetic word as for me and my house we will not only serve the lord we will serve in safety we will serve in peace in the name of jesus in jesus name i pray now listen to me you are going to mention every month from january to december give it an instruction by the word of god you're going to command it to shine take away every negative thing from your january from your february go ahead pray january i speak to you you are the month that the lord has made february the month that the lord has made march the month that the lord has made april may june i decree and declare disaster be taken from my months shame be taken out of my months death be taken out of my months declare retrogression be taken out of my mouth this honor be taken out of my mouth by the power of the holy ghost from january till december my life and my days will bring glory to the name of the lord prophesy as i travel in the air i decree and declare safety and preservation 
as I drive on land safety and preservation by the sea safety and preservation in my coming out in my going in safety and preservation hallelujah hallelujah please don't be tired we're praying now hear me the season of marvelous light also means an unveiling of what is hidden are you ready to declare that everything in my life that god has put within me that should find expression to bring glory to the name of the lord and to be a blessing to me that has been covered hitherto this year you are unveiled go ahead and pray every gift every anointing every unction locked up within your spirit every business idea every potential locked up within your spirit find visibility let the light reveal let the light reveal let the light reveal let the light reveal in the name of jesus hallelujah 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 I want you to pray you're going to mention as much as you can the names of your loved ones and all who are within your care and declare light father expose anything that wants to keep these people down wants to keep them limited in the name of Jesus let light come let it expose and let it lift them go ahead open your mouth pray for your parents pray for your children mention them by name You are brooding over every darkness You are causing light to shine from darkness You are brooding over every darkness You are causing light to shine from darkness Holy Ghost is brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine from God please pray you this year my children will not give me headache they will not give me trouble let there be light in my family let there be light over my parents let there be light over my loved ones as for me and my house hallelujah please listen to me listen to me apologize i know we've stretched a few minutes but please listen to me everybody is going to pray over the works of your hands don't say it does not matter the only reason why israel goes to egypt is hunger every time there is hunger can i tell you this listen it is important one of the reasons why we pray 
that the supplies of heaven find expression in our lives so that it can grant us the stability to not compromise can i tell you the truth many believers under pressure will do things they will not believe they will do it's easy to point fingers at people and say oh this one this politician this one but we have to pray even jacob in genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2 jacob said why do you look at yourselves like this i have heard that there is corn in egypt he said get down thither and buy for us so that we will live and not die even a prophet when he is hungry he will send his future to egypt you've heard me say it i will never be the man of god who will only focus on the spiritual development of god's people and not care about their well-being christianity is, is a responsible faith practice that attempts or that that covers the love of god and his intention is to bring holistic holistic life and joy to us one of the major areas where god's people right now as i speak not something that will happen is in this area of finance and economy the bible says the borrower is slave to the lender that means if i want to make you a slave i don't have to make you a slave by making you a slave I only make you a slave by making you a borrower are we together there are many believers who are in terrible financial situations I've had the honor and the privilege to pray with a number of people especially in recent times people who love God sincerely but the bills will not let them rest can you pray that one prayer before I speak over your life listen you are going to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus this is the season where you will see the manifestation of God's grace even in the area of supplies pray for yourself pray for your ministry pray for your business please do not entertain lack and want it will affect your convictions pray open the heavens oh God grant wisdom grant relationships supernatural ideas strange manifestations of favor bring your people to their wealthy place bring your people to their heaven the slavery of lack and want and poverty we curse you by the god of heaven this is a season of light your people will experience supplies supernatural supplies hallelujah hallelujah that's the hardly meet animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens this is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage, right? There are so many people who now challenge their pastors, challenge everybody. Are you the only one who will preach? Are you the only one? We have a democratic church that can vote out, throw out pastors because of policies. Have you read in First Samuel, I can't remember, I think maybe 
chapter 15 or 13. One time when Saul, is that true? When Samuel told Saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly, is that true? He was coming to make a sacrifice. They gathered the people, it's in your Bible. And then Saul told, I mean Samuel said he's coming at so and so time. And he didn't come. And they waited for him, they waited for him, they waited for him. After they waited for him, people were scattering. And the ego of the king, Saul, was, was at stake. And he said, Kai, this guy is not coming. Let me what? Offer the bond offering. As soon as he offered the bond offering, Samuel came. And he said, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, honestly. I was afraid. It's not like I wanted. I need to. I didn't want to do it. The people were disturbing me. And since you were not around, I thought since I was a king, let me do it. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had allowed me to come, God would have established your throne. So it would have now been son of Saul, not son of David. He said, because you have done this, the kingdom is taken to you. For God has found another man after his heart. Just for violating the priesthood. How many people violate the priesthood today? And they don't care. Right? All kinds of people. Any man can get up at any point. Lambast any man of God, write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free. Go and read your Bible. It's because we have become carnally minded. We don't even know what it means to be a man of God. We think being a man of God is choosing the vocation of preaching. Right? So that when one walk or the other doesn't walk, or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative, you just say, talk. It's okay, at least you are preaching. You see, this is our mindset. So, we, do not, we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar. There were times in the Bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things, they left it there. Have you read about Uzzah in the Bible? I'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards. The Bible says we do not discern the body of Christ. And many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate. Right? Remember that there was a time when the ark of God was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uzzah for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you, you are our younger brother, don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in, in, in five months, God can open you to fountains of blessings, you know, they look around and say, eh, I know. It's not like I'm saying God cannot do it, but you see, we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today. Right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals? Today, if we were before the Red Sea, this is what Apostle Joshua Selman would have done. Engineers, where are you? The spirit of Bazalel. And then we'll start constructing a bridge. We'll say, that if I'm a prophet, in five years we'll cross this Red Sea. See that? That's how we would have worked. That's how much we have reduced God. That's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come. And we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start, architects come. Let's start, and then, where are the kingdom financiers? And then, prayer department, where are, and then we keep praying. And God says, is that all to me? And then after five years, we say, now you will cross the bridge slowly. 
And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by Apostle Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Because we call that the Old Testament. We laugh at them. We even say they are a shadow of us. Are you joking? Read Hebrews 11. There are men who in their humanity, we cannot even touch their shoes. Yet, they, that's the Old Testament. We are very quick to say it's old. We have done away with it. But we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done. It's in your Bible. People invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening all around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? Look at, look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true? And do a lot of carnal things. There is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural or and, 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 and that of unbelievers. If I stand right now and I minister to Sam and he falls under the anointing, people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft. Where did we leave our spirituality? Is it not in your Bible that Jesus with the divine light walked through people on a cliff? They were trying to kill him. He walked through them like a spirit. Where is that generation? I wanted to show us a video. It's just that um, we, we, we didn't have it. I didn't discuss with the media. Would have shown us that video um, of Patricia King. Right? I know they don't have it. They may not have it now. Otherwise, you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven. Real oil. Physical oil. You would have seen the foot of real angels. That you are not pressing into God doesn't mean some other people are not. The divine life. We shout Zoe. We shout Zoe. But there is nothing Zoe about our lives. If they shoot me, I die. Zoe. Right? Every, ep every epidemic is in the society. And it embraces me. Zoe. Now, I don't say this in a derogatory way. I'm saying this to challenge us. I guarantee you. If we learn how to receive that Zoe life. You will watch HIVs get chilled as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. I look at people line up for counseling and I bleed in my heart because I say, shame on us. It means we are doing very small. A sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted, they should now go out and begin to transform people. But today we say, wow, I had a crowd, hundreds of people, to, to mean that ministry is moving forward. Wrong parameters. Because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard. Who is God speaking to tonight? Where have you reduced God? Let me tell you. One day, maybe I will come in the night, I will bring a chair here, one coin on here. We we'll just sit down and we we'll discuss. And I will share with you some of my encounters when God began to walk with me. Some of you, if I share it as you are seated now, you've seen me every day. You've even eaten with me, but you will not believe it. Because you say it's a lie. Encounters with angels. All kinds of spiritual encounters. Because I believe in Him. I believe in Him. I'll never forget the first time I had the audible voice of God. Let me tell you something. If you hear God, you must have faith. You see that? It's not about maybe I'm trying to calculate. You must have faith. 
Listen. At the, at the Mount of Transfiguration, when Elijah and Moses appeared, what did Peter do? Peter recognized them immediately. Had he ever seen them? Who told him? He said, what? I see three people. It's a privilege. That means I have questions to ask. Let's prepare three beds. One for Elijah, one for Moses, because he thought they came to pass the night with Jesus and discuss a lot of things. When an angel appeared to Mary, Mary was not afraid. Mary was a natural occurrence. It was the salutation she was afraid of, not the angel. Today, if somebody says he has seen an angel, I beg Jerry, angel, where you think angels are just like that? Yet the Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? I'm showing you why we have become carnal. We threw away the Holy Spirit. We are gradually kicking the Holy Spirit out in a bid to do what we call word, 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 word. Right? Word, word, word. Just the word. Give it the word and, and don't give me anything else. There are even people who reject Jesus and say, just give me Bible. Give me Bible, Jesus, go. Once it's not Bible, even Jesus should go away. What are we saying? And the devil likes that theology. If it is Bible you want, Zondavan, keep publishing. New versions keep coming out. And we keep carrying the Bible. And we convince ourselves that because we are holding Bible and reading it, we are growing in the world. But we are becoming carnal. That's why death is rampant. It is that carnality. Do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us? Is that true? Witchcraft in the village is not a shock. An average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft. So if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear, he will believe it. But in the church, ah, if I disappear here now, now, in this place, finally the article will be complete. The article you have been writing, you will pay New Nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it. Confirm. Hey. Which is on suit. Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like the Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church call spiritual growth prosperity since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality. So if I come out with a jeep, if there are five jeeps that are lined up here, you say, man, God is in Koinonia. What? Five jeeps? He's here. Oh. In Bible days, men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit. One man will threaten a nation, not a politician. But Elijah, not in a radio station, he made a declaration to the heavens. He vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said, Me, I speak, there will not be rain. Not God revealed to me. I stand in my office over this territory. And I said, there will not be rain. And he went to bed. It was by sorcery, Jezebel found out he was the one. And she swore to remove his head. How many men of God have disgraced themselves on television? How many men of God have disgraced their ministries in newspapers? How many men of God predicted that 2012 is, is rapture? Huh? How many? You see, we, we, we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years. Instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation, we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves. Gotta be more, gotta be more. It's 
Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healing and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working. No. We have to be, admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church, what will you tell them? I know what you will tell them. I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't. You are liars. We are Must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the Son. And that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it. Fragments of it. But there is a revival that is coming. This will be a revival of the Spirit himself. When the Spirit of God will start schooling people by ourselves. Because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us. The Spirit of God in these days. The Lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week. I've been under an intense anointing right from when I finished the, the financial series. And the Holy Ghost told me she will personally begin to teach people. As many who are interested, there will be such a move of the Spirit. I'm telling you, God will begin to tutor people. And the more you see Him, the more you will know preachers are lying. The more you encounter Him, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars. The Lord is revealing this to me. This is how God trained me. God taught me so many things. Secrets in the Bible. There are times that I will, the Lord will be visiting me and His presence, physical cloud. I'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about. Real cloud, like a fog, will fill the room. And I'll lie down there and the pages of my Bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures. I hope you believe it. Hallelujah. We have reduced God. We have reduced God. It's, this is too bad. To an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up, people look and they say, Kai, who knows him? Look at how you put pressure on men of God. People come for miracle service, we have to be asking them, where are you coming from? So that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. It's a shame. It says, he that has a son has life. Has life. Look at what Jesus did. An example of what we should become. Jesus, five loaves and two fish, he multiplied it. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Everywhere we go, we are doing bad or at least average. And yet we claim to have his spirit. There are people who even brag and say, I have the spirit of Jesus without measure. Where is it? Where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here, you have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you?
How many people don't pray? They come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense. I am a prayer warrior. But there is a, there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer. It follows their teachings. It's like a spirit. It's like a finishing on your words. If you are a man of the altar, it truly, that fire, it's not just the shouting. There is a communication of life. How many people claim they are prayer warriors and they stand and speak and while they are speaking, you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically. Because there is no life that is coming. The question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me? Many of us did not start like this. God is speaking to us. Many of us, when we started, we were spiritual. We meant business with God. Eventually, as we started getting some results in our lives, we have thrown the Holy Spirit out. Now we are left with letters, convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures, it means we are growing spiritually. Do you not see the need in our world today? There are people with HIV, cancer. There are people in need of the Zoe life that we claim to have. We claim to have Zoe. I am an ambassador of the kingdom. Then demonstrate it. He said, when I came to you, I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech. Because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, this is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshipping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around and we give all kinds of explanations for it. Do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials where in a sleep you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you right i want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power and when you wake up in the morning like like solomon an intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh. this is how god trained me I remember a time in my life when I was sleeping in the night. This happened for almost two months. And at least one of God's generals will come to me in dreams. Explaining to me their perspectives. I remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives. I remember a man called Peter Tan. The first time I would meet that man was in a vision. The first time I ever saw Apostle Paul, he was in a vision. I didn't even know he was the one. I just saw a man who was short and bald headed. After speaking to me, then I asked, who are you? And he didn't respond to me. He moved a while and then he turned and said, Paul. The first time I would see the picture on the internet, I said, this is the man I saw. Yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. The name Koinonia was a revelation. It's not that I just sat down and said, Kai, what should we call it now? No. No. Right now, everything we do is sensual and carnal. The exact blueprint and the things that we are doing in this ministry were a revelation. A revelation by God. It was the Spirit of God that revealed to me the secret of church growth. Now, I'm not saying I'm throwing away materials and all of that. It's good. I've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves. But I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Let me have somebody here. Just one person. Anybody. You're a visitor. You're a pastor. From 
worry. You came all the way. Oh, you served in Jigawa and you are here right now. Your face is in. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with you. If he approves it, then it's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then, when you come for koinonia, oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you. And, and all those things you say, I, I love you. You are my all in all. You are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally, literally to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said, who do men say I am? One day the Holy Ghost will ask you, who do men say I am? Say, yeah, you are the spirit of this. You are the... And then he says, who do you call me? And he says, I don't know you. And he says, now write, my name is the spirit of life. And to you that becomes a revelation. At once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartation. When was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately in the kingdom... You must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple, your temple now, not a building, is filled with his glory. And songs begin to come. Look at what musicians write. Nonsense! They, they write songs that don't bless anybody. They just come up with songs. The reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income. When was the last time you stood in His presence and you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit? When was the last time you went to minister, man of God, and you stood in that meeting and when you finished, people were shaking. They could not explain what happened. They knew that something heavenly, like the dew of the morning, came upon them. They may not even remember what you thought, but they knew they carried the spirit. When was the last time, because of your teaching, someone just turned and said, Lord, I will seek you. And lock yourself three days. Do that today in our generation. And people say you are over spiritualizing things. So God is not like that. This guy came all the way from where? From, from Jigawa State. To come for a meeting. Because there is a hunger. It's not a conference. It's not a convention. But hunger brought him. Right? God must show us something in this generation. Otherwise, these games that we are playing will end up frustrating us. God must show us something. That's my cry as a man of God. I cry to God and I say, Lord, I don't want to do the ordinary. There is something you've got to show me. That's why I love my secret place. Those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street eating granite and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. 
I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face. My relevance is tied to his glory. My ability to translate the realities in Christ. Let me tell you something. My, my goal, I've seen it in visions but they have not happened. I saw one time in a vision, let me share with you one vision that I had. One time, I, I say it jokingly, but truly, truly I had a vision. And a ghastly motor accident happened. Ghastly motor accident. As it was happening, it's like I was caught up from somewhere. A physical location with my body. And all of a sudden I appeared there. And it was just like a shadow like this. Just passed through those dead bodies. And including the car, there was a sound like the car. The way it hit, the impact, it came back as though nothing had happened. Ah, may God bring us to those days. May God bring us to those days. May God bring us to those days. A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the ministry rest. You invoke the power of creation, the soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible? Where you see that many things happen to people. Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do his best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. Even if you are not interested, there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit. For you to do that, you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry. Because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension. But how many people are that willing? Bless you. How many people are that willing? How many people are that willing to see the power of God? Transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now. I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach, I don't like people turning to me and saying, Man of God, your message was powerful. Powerful in what? I want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that. I want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming. Not just that a great man of God visited a place. That's not enough. And this life, is in his son. He who has the son has this divine life. But the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ. It must be translated to find expression. The more of God's life and God's glory transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life, the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. And then you become, as I would say, the end voice of his presence. Careers of his glory. Careers of his power. Then you will see the eyes of the blind open. Then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped. Hallelujah. While I was ministering over the weekend, there was a woman who, I don't know if they went to wash her ear or something, and then the ear was blocked during the workers' conference of CDC. And I called the woman out. And standing face to face, I said, I can either ruin this woman's life with lies or give her something that is of the truth. One time, Ben Hinn was laying hands on people and they were falling down. And Ora Roberts looked at him and said, Benny, don't just lay hands on them. He said, give them something. Oh, fine. Can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now? Media is ready with the video. Okay, media. Just, just play. Guys, maybe you can sit down and then after that you come up. Let's, let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video. And um, it's a video of the supernatural. It's to spoil you and then I'll come up and, and, and wrap up. Very quickly. Hi, we're in 
San Juan, Puerto Rico, where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place. The Lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways, angelic visitation, uh, very unique signs and wonders, which we'll actually show you in a few moments. You'll be absolutely astounded at what the Lord is doing. But it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for God. There seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved, healings, deliverances, miracles, all those good things with people deepening in their worship and, and loving the word of God. And so it's a, it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out. So we're at the House of uh, Restoration and Mercy with Pastor Dennis Roja. And uh, it's just awesome what is taking place. Pastor Dennis is one of the most humble people that I have ever met. He's so precious, has just a small uh, work and a very humble work. It reminds me of, of, of where Jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things. Um, Pastor Dennis uh, was uh, in, in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him. He had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here, uh, because uh, we just dumped them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave uh, two pastor dentists in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it, it's filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out, comes back in. Uh, right now in the current church that he's in, that he has a Bible open on the podium and oil just fills the pages of the Bible. It's filling the pages of the Bible and uh, little gemstones, little rough cut diamonds are falling out of the Bible onto the podium. And then as he squeezes the Bible, the oil comes out, copious amounts of oil. This particular oil smells like myrrh. It's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it and it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has and at the same time these kind of um, manifestations are happening in fact he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church off the beams onto the floor onto the seats and it's just non-stop continuous pouring out of oil at the same time these manifestations are taking place um, there's souls being saved, there's people being healed, intense worship and prayer, uh, deliverances, people are being set free. This is truly a move of God and that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek Him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. 
It must bring our focus back onto him. We will get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor. And that's when he first noticed the prince. He was so excited. The Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited. And the prints that were on the floor, the footprints, were actually the footprints of that angel. They're about 16 to 20 inches long, I believe. And um, then uh, he had to go away. The cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way, and on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this, in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage I don't think does it justice but when you're here you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room and so it's really an amazing time uh, he was also at a, uh, a, a prayer meeting with five men praying and they were uh, praying and as they prayed the Lord visited with an audible voice and with the audible voice the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew. And Pastor Dennis said, well, why are you giving it to me then? Because I'm a Gentile. And the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, a supernatural token of the 12 uh, tribes of Israel, the gemstones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And that he had an assignment for him to do in that way. And so then the gemstones... Uh, uh, came just dropped over the next month. They start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st. He had all 12 stones, with the amber one being the last one. When you see them in, 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 in person, they're just brilliant and causes a worship, an adoration in your heart, an awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them. Absolutely outstanding. 1,200 gemstones, over 1,200 gemstones have fallen. The 12 uh, special stones that were given to him, uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing in intercession before the Lord. And the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel, I believe. And uh, many other signs and wonders, such as the oil and the, the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil. But all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is wholly devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. People don't understand. They think he's of a cult or whatever. But I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God, because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied in Acts chapter 2, he said, in the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to... It's not just to get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days, we'll just come and we'll dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that He has done in time past. 
Hallelujah. It's very, very important. Because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. It's to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to money and marriage and power and mundane things. Thank God for these things. We just finished a financial series. But let me tell you the truth. God is looking for revivalists. God is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with. And I've made myself available. God knows with my entire life. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, sing, you are mighty on your throne. The spirit of the deep and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life. The divine life, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We want to become epistles of power. Break forth, O oh spirit of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. O oh sea, you ancient Zion king. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Say, you are mighty on your throne. 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 We refuse to reduce your power. We step up the standard. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty.
out of powerless dissertations of men. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Say, you are mighty on your throne.
There is a divine life that can change hopeless situations. There is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without faith. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. I am determined to be supernatural in every way. In every way. No. The sons of God are not natural people. They are supernatural. In every way. Pray. My hands are supernatural. My words are supernatural. Lift your voice and pray. My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power. The soul life. The power to heal. The power to alter the destinies of people. The power to transform their lives. You are mighty on your own. You are mighty on your own. You are mighty in my life. 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 Say, you are mighty in my life. 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 One more time. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That from today, dead religion will die out of your life. I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the Soe life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves that the earthly, the terrestrial has become celestial and heavenly I pray in the name of Jesus that may that life begin to manifest through your life that your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders that when men need God to show up they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory I pray for you may your words carry the power from heaven May your words no longer be barren and powerless. May your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you. May they bring healing. May the words bring grace. May they bring life. Like the river in Ezekiel 47. That everywhere it flows. Let the fish that was dead come back to life. 
Let the souls that are dead come back to life. I pray that from today, your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death, wasting the time of God's people. May you step into an unusual dimension. I'd like you to receive what I'm releasing upon you. It's a ministration of the Spirit. Many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk. You will begin to see the demonstration. Not just in talk. Talk, talk, talk with no results. There are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there, all of a sudden your territory begins to react because the Zoe life, not just that which is in Christ alone, that which has been manifest right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now. You will go back to your territories. Many of you will pass people and you will hear spirits scream out of them. You didn't plan to pray for them, but you took the presence of God. You took the life of heaven. So way, the life that controls heaven. So way, the life that upholds all things. I'm praying for you that everything that has defied God in your life, in the name that is above all names, may that Zoe life come upon it right now. May that Zoe life come upon every sick body here right now. May that life of God let it come upon every dying spiritual life. Every lukewarm spiritual life. The life that makes men doubt whether God is working with you or not. I pray for you. Let it change from tonight. You don't have to tell people you are a man of God. Carry that life. Carry that divine life. May that life hold sickness from your body permanently. This repeated terminal cycle of nonsense that comes upon your body discern the Lord's body so that you will be strong discern the Lord's body Father I pray let there be mighty men and women that will arise from this meeting tonight let tonight's meeting produce a spiritual awakening and I stretch my hands and I pray for you whatever you came here with in the name that is above all names that is not consistent with the Zoe life. Whatever it is. That is not consistent with the life of heaven. Right now I declare in the name of Jesus. That it leaves your body and your life now. I cause every pain. I cause every situation. That is attempting to challenge God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord put a testimony in your mouth. That will verify before men. That you are a carrier of his presence. Father we give you all the praise. Listen. Walk out of this meeting. Not just with an excitement but with a consciousness that you are not only a carrier, but a dispenser. The Bible says the first Adam was made a quickening soul. A quickening soul can only benefit, but cannot dispense. But the second Adam was made a life-giving spirit. A life-giving spirit. Next time someone is sick around you, don't just turn and say, bring him to Joshua Selman or bring him to this. Tell him in the name of Jesus, I agree with you. You have been doing it as an ordinary Christian. That's why it's not working. You have just been doing it as say, after all, I'm a brother. Do it now as one who is together with the Holy Spirit. Always realize that it's not about you. It's about the paracletos. Always realize you are going to preach 
don't just go alone i'm going to go and minister you'll be disappointed go with him when you stand on that stage even if you do not know what to say realize that there is one the spirit of life as you stand to sing and minister realize that you are not just talking songs or melodies but you are ministering life and you will be amazed to see people change don't be afraid of confronting situations with god without god there are many things that are not possible hallelujah i want to pray for people here right now keep standing everyone i want to pray for people right now you had this fiery message tonight on the life of god there are people who have not received the son of god you have heard about jesus you may have even preached about him he has been offered to you many times but you have not received him hallelujah there are others who have given their lives to christ but sincerely you know that the name of what you are doing right now based on the standard of god you have missed out on the track of spiritual progress and you need to make your way those two categories of people i don't care if you have been a preacher for 30 years you need to make your way right you say lord this thing I've been doing is not Christianity. I'm, 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 I'm tired of playing games. Right now, inside and outside, please make your way quickly and come to the front. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Don't sit back. Don't wait for someone to come before you. God bless you. Find your way to the front. There are many people outside. Don't sit back. Make your way to the front. God bless you. Koinonia, keep celebrating them as they come. Your life must change. Don't worry. Leave I look. Hallelujah. Tonight will mark a turning point and a defining moment in the life of many people. Hallelujah. Please draw, draw close as I lead you to pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Um, I understand there's a woman who, there are, there are two people I'm supposed to minister to, but I'll minister to one right now. There is a woman who has been having issues of miscarriage. This is not word of knowledge. I, I'm aware that the woman is supposed to be here. I don't know if she came, if she's around. Is, is that person around or that family you are the one not just word of knowledge you, you came uh, is this your first time of being here come you're the one with that situation from where did you come Nina. Nina. how long has it been four times four times you get pregnant you lose the baby you get pregnant you lose the baby. We are glad to announce to you that this is where it stops. I guarantee. Listen. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. God did not bring you here to waste your time. There is always a spirit behind it. Four times is not mistake. Four times is no longer biology. Four children. Four destinies. Four lives. Thrown away by the assault of darkness. Now imagine if this was your church. And a woman comes like this to come and meet the great man of God. Then you talk grammar. And by the time you finish explanation, the Bible never said creation is waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. It says creation is waiting for the manifestation. Madam, I assure you that not only will God set you free, but there will be restoration in your life. You believe that? Lay your hands on your stomach and let's pray brings joy. We represent the government of heaven. Lay your hands. That devil of darkness. Your time is over in this woman's life. Right now. You are a wicked spirit of darkness and you must leave. Right now. Go out of her. By the power of the Holy Spirit there is an anointing coming upon you for you to be free of this nonsense. 
that the devil has planted in your stomach, I feel heat leaving my hands to you. That wicked spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you are free of this demonic influence. Not only will you give birth, you will go and take in immediately and your child will stay. You will have as many children as you want in the name of Jesus Christ. This thing is not happening to you alone. Huh? This is, this is a trend in your family. This is because I'm praying for you and I see a spirit. Huh? I'm seeing a trend. It's something that keeps happening. People miscarry and people have all kinds of things. And so it's not like it's something bad you did as a person. Are you getting my point now? But Jesus Christ sets you free. Where's your husband? He's in Minatu. Go and tell him that not only will the Lord um, bring a child to your family, God will turn around your entire lives because you are here. You believe that? Father, in the name of Jesus, confirm your word. Like Eli, I speak to you like you spoke to Anna. Go and come back with your child. It's done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Those of you coming, uh, I want you to lift your hands. Please, you are not reciting a poem. Young and old mean it serious with Jesus. See, the trouble is when people come out like this, they suddenly remember that they were emotional and they came out. And then they are embarrassed and then they are ashamed. This is serious business. Hallelujah. Say after me from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. Some of you as you are praying, the power of God will come upon you strongly. Because the gospel is the power of God. Right? To them that believe. I receive your life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from tonight, I'm no longer natural. I'm no longer ordinary. The power that raised Christ from the dead is within me. I declare that habits, addictions, and every life that is not consistent with that of the kingdom, has no power over me right now the holy spirit the very spirit of god the life of god is at work in me i declare that i go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus keep those hands lifted please father in the name of jesus i pray i commend these ones to you spirit of the living god you are the life-giving spirit of god I pray that tonight in a very supernatural way you will come upon their lives and you will make them ambassadors of the kingdom. Right now in the name of Jesus may that life and that power may that fire that all surpassing life of the spirit come upon you. Breaking every chain and every limitation that comes with the old man. In the name of Jesus I set you free to begin to experience the life of God. The Zoe life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me is my name. And the word of the Lord in First Corinthians chapter 4 and in verse 20 it says, The kingdom of God is not in word but in power. We believe the word of the Lord has come to you, not just in words by the servant of the Lord, Apostle Joshua Selman, but also in the manifest demonstration of the power of the Lord. We'd like you to do well to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so as to stay in touch with the consistent uploads from Reflector Hub YouTube channel and also get to experience the demonstration of the power of the Lord. That as the word of the Lord comes to your life today, don't hesitate. Be a blessing, an extension of the power of the Lord to your family, to your friends, to your loved ones do well by sharing this video to every one of them and also bringing them into the light and the understanding of god's word that they also become partakers of this power thank you and god bless you